Welcome back to another video on my channel. I've got two very special guests with me today. Uh, they're two very good friends. Uh, they live very close to me. I've known Alan for a long, long time. He was my best man even at my wedding. So, hello, Alan. Hello. Hi, and also Matty, who I've had the pleasure of knowing for quite a few years now. He's a southerner who's moved up north, so you've got to respect him for that. All right, Matty. <laughs> good evening. And uh, Matty's putting us all to shame with his uh, array of shirts in the background. <laughs> so, Matty, just explain why you've got so many shirts. I, I just love football shirts. It doesn't matter what club they come from, what country they come from. Just absolutely love football shirts. So, uh, the wife doesn't agree with the amount that get delivered to my home, but love them. So, wardrobe's taken up full of them. So yeah, I've just I mean, a few favourite this evening. Yeah, they're, they're good. I mean, to be fair, your wife doesn't know how many you've bought, does she? No, I try and, try and sniff them in. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Alan? Have you got a, an array of shirts? No. No, no. no. <laughs> last one I got must have been 2013, 14 season, maybe. Okay. The last time I got one. And then it's been a, it's been a shameful run since then, I think. Yeah, well, I, I stopped buying shirts um, pretty much because I just refused to pay Mike Ashley money for, for merchandise, to be honest. Um, so I've not bought that many shirts over the last few years. I've got one or two, but but not many. Um, but I'll just, so the audience know, actually, obviously it's it's clear who Matty supports at QPR, but who's your team? Yeah, I'm a Villa fan. Villa fan. Now that on this channel as a Newcastle supporter is, is a little bit controversial because I'll, I'll be honest and, and I'm not sure whether you're aware of this there's a lot of Newcastle fans out there who really don't like Aston Villa <laughs> Did you, are you aware of that? Yeah, yeah I, I don't know why yeah, yeah. Yeah. it was the um, old uh, the, the season Newcastle went down wasn't it with the uh, sob on the time banner that's it I've across. actually got a picture of that um, there it is now I don't think we've ever really chatted much about that, to be perfectly honest. In no. fact, we watch, we actually watched that game together um, in a bar in Scarborough, if you remember, <laughs> uh, and it was dreadful. Yeah. But, um, I mean, to me, things like that are just, I don't really care. I can't, I can't bring myself to hold a grudge against that for like, whatever, thir 12 years, 13 years or whatever it's been. Yeah. Yeah, there, there was no provocation for the Villa fans to do it either. I'm not quite sure what <laughs> what the reason for that banner was. It was yeah. it came out of the blue, really, didn't it? The, yeah, I no think it was just. Like... Yeah, to be honest, I think it was just one guy who kind of just thought it was funny, and then, but then, I think there's. Yeah. If I'm honest, I think there's been a few Newcastle fans got a bit too sensitive about it and have held <laughs> held it against them for so long. But then, I think for me, having like my, one of my best friends as a Villa fan, I just. I can't bring myself to have that hatred for Villa in the same way that maybe other people can. I don't know, but that's just my opinion anyway. So, um, anyway, just talking about your your team seasons. Then, how how do you feel uh, things are going so far? So, Matty, what how how's QPR season shaping up? Yeah, very mixed. I think we we win some weeks, we'll lose some weeks. Some weeks we'll look fantastic, and that we play off play some weeks we look like we'll probably should be in League One. Um, conceded far too many goals from, from, from penalties, really. Conceded five penalties in four, um, which have all been scored. So, I mean, you don't stand much chance of you conceding that many that many penalties and then attempting to keep a clean sheet for the rest of the game. Um, we are we have shored up at the back. So, actually, if we, we didn't concede those penalties, we might, we might do all right. But um, going forward, we've lost some attacking flair. A Barry Eze has gone to gone to Palace. Yeah, um, I was going to ask you about him. Like, how big how big a loss is that? Can you even begin to quantify that? Well, massive, massive. I think if you talk to any any fan who uh, watched him play in the ship last season, will say in that game he was probably the best player on the pitch. He just got everything. Could score goals, took players on. Um, provided assists, would even get back and do a bit of defending as well. Absolute um, gem of a player. Uh, I'd be very surprised if he if he doesn't break into that England squad in the next year or two. Um, yeah. Yeah, massive, massive loss. For a championship team to lose that quality is massive. Yeah. Um, and we haven't really 
haven't really replaced him with, with I mean, we've brought in Albert Adoma, who, who's a similar type of player, but obviously not at that, that quality, ageing a little bit. Um, and we've lost Ryan Manning as well, who's gone to Swansea, which is, again, a strange move, I thought. If we finish mid-table, I'll be, I'll be, be happy. I think that's probably where I need to be with the amount of money that we've, we've got available and the players yeah. that we've got. Are you worried that you could get dragged into a relegation fight, though? No, no, I'm not. I, I, I'm not. We'll, we'll, we'll win a couple, we'll lose a couple. Um, I don't think... I think there's, there's, worse, there's far worse teams than us in, in that league. I think we've got some, some good defenders. If they can be a bit more disciplined and not concede so many penalties, we might keep the old clean sheet <laughs> why, in there. Why are um, they giving so many penalties away? What's going on? I think... I, I just I just don't know. I, I, I think it's a bit of last-minute panic. Fake creeping in. The last-minute <laughs> panic. Um... Silly handballs, maybe. It's just, it, it's, it's unbelievable watching some games and you sit there and just think, well, when are we going to concede this penalty? Because it's coming. Um, yeah. but I think if we, if we, we'll win a couple, we'll, we'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. And what about Villa then, Alan? How, you must be pretty chuffed with how they've started the season. Yeah, can't complain, can I? No, a really good start. Um, yeah, great for seven games. Games who we were placed, um, to stay the take, we've taken the points we got now. Um, yeah, I'd have, uh, I'd have bitten your hand off. Um, you know, I've got a game in hand as well. If that won that, we've got top. Uh, well, if you if you just looked at those games we played, and you would say to me that the two teams we lost against would be Leeds and Southampton, you know, I'd be like, what the hell? Because, um, we've got we've obviously beaten Liverpool, Leicester. Yeah, you know, beating all the harder teams really, but then yeah, did, did really turn up against Leeds. Was really really yeah. poor. Um, can I just say? Can I just yeah. say? Right, you you have a bit of a reputation uh, for winding Leeds fans up because obviously where we live, there's quite a lot of Leeds fans, and when Leeds do well, yeah. they come out they come out of the woodwork, don't they? It's like it's amazing. You, you don't see them, and then all of a sudden yeah. they do really well, and they come out. You spend your time <laughs> winding Leeds up. You spent you, you've spent basically fifteen years <laughs> telling Leeds fans how terrible they are. So how did you feel when Villa got stuffed by Leeds? Yeah, it was hard to take, but at the same time, it, it was a weird one because. I got to hold my hands up and say they absolutely mullered us in that second half. Uh, Leeds actually were, were brilliant. I can't fault them. It, yeah. You know, it was, it was, it was, it hurt a lot to see them absolutely pound us in that way. But it's a strange old season because then they haven't really been um, I mean, obviously, Leicester is still a good side, but they've just been quite put the level of performance against them as they did against us. Yeah, well, yeah. I'd I mean, like I've, got, I've got to say, I don't know what you think, but I think I've been quite impressed with Leeds. But clearly, they they're going to have issues uh, just in defence, haven't they? They're just conceding far too many goals, and I think um, I think I really I really kind of I don't worry for them because it's Leeds. But I do. If you were a Leeds fan, you would worry about the amount of goals they're shipping. I think I think that could be their Achilles heel. Yeah, they had the was it Ben White last year? Who was uh, Brighton? Who they had on loan from Brighton? I don't think they quite. They signed Cock, haven't they? Yeah, who um, the, who the commentators quite, cannot. The commentators can't bring themselves to say yeah. it properly. Yeah. <laughs> Brett blocked by Cock. Yeah, uh, this cat. Yeah, I've, I've heard all. I've heard all kinds of pron pronunciations. Um, yeah, what? So just going back to Villa. What are your hopes for the rest of the season for Villa then? Well, it was really just to push on from from where they were last year. I mean, the Villa just survived last game really right at the death. They survived this, you know, relegation, and um, and it was really just to push on, you know, more knock up towards mid table. But yeah. you know, just with the start of the signings they made in pre, you know, in pre season. You know, he signed some really, really good players in key positions that needed to be strengthened, and I, I think, you know, it, it's looking more promising than just pushing away from the relegation zone. They, they could be looking, you know, more more into like the top half. But you know, like I said, that game in hand they've got it would put them top if they won it. But that's obviously high hopes. So, getting, yeah. you know, not, you won't get carried away with that. No, but it's a funny season, though, isn't it? I mean, clearly, no one's dominating in the way that. 
they were last season with Liverpool obviously running away with it. But um, I think Villa, yeah, I think you've got every right to be confident about your season, and I don't see why, with especially with that midfield you've you've created, I think I don't see why you can't finish in the top half. No, no, that is the, that is the main strength of the side now. It's the midfield. Um, and certainly that with um, Watkins was obviously a bit of a gamble with the amount that was paid for him, but he's he's shown his way. He's got he's got five goals in the Premier League already. Um, naturally, he's got six because he's got the um, But his um, his work rate and it, it just gives them another dimension. It, it draws a lot of the attention away from Grealish now because uh, last year there was just Villa had nothing up front and just relied on all the midfielders to get the goals. Now yeah. they're getting the goal from midfield and, and from Watkins, which is good. Yeah. And then um, today we've just had the news that uh, the Premier League are scrapping the pay-per-view uh, football and, and games are going to go back on free-to-air TV. So, I mean, as, a, as football fans, that's that's great news, isn't it, Matty? Oh, definitely. I think I think it's it, it was a terrible idea in the first place. I, I, I cannot see where, where they got the idea of keeping... Especially in this in the current climate where fans can't get into the grounds and see their, their team play, and to charge them an extra fifteen quid or whatever it was to watch their team play, I, I just I just couldn't I just couldn't understand the, the logic behind it. Apart from a bit of a money making project, I thought I think if you if you're gonna if people are gonna pay their money, which isn't, which isn't or BT Sport, which isn't particular as it is, to then charge them the extra to watch their, their team play, I think is. Uh, was wrong. So yeah, welcome that. Welcome that news. I think I think it's, it's good for football. I think it's good for football fans. Um, and we all want to watch the football, don't we? We all want to, we all want to see it. So yeah, I think if we can get it under platforms that we've already got, then then fabulous. Yeah, I think for me personally, I just think I've actually really enjoyed uh, during during the first lockdown. I really enjoyed kind of watching like loads of games. I watched more football than. I probably had done on TV in like the last five years combined. I just I'd sat down and watched so many games, and obviously Newcastle's every Newcastle game was on. So for me, that was amazing. I just got to watch it. Um, I don't know. What do you think about it all, Al? Yeah, the pay per view thing was just not the best idea, was it? It was just a way of exploiting, you know, fans who just wanted to see every game, really, wasn't it? Because um, they had no other option. Uh, I mean. Like you said last year during the uh, during the lockdown, it was great that you could watch every game because otherwise it would just be completely behind closed doors. You wouldn't be able to see anything, mm-hmm. barring a few highlights maybe on match of the day. Yeah. But yeah, the fifteen pounds was just a way of cashing in and exploiting yeah. people. It was just um, too high, I mean, wasn't it? Was was too much money. Yeah, I can't it. I mean, we we said didn't you? You know, you you said earlier about um, not like to put my money in my cash in his pocket. Even he was against it, and that says something, really. Yeah, I think he, I think Ashley had all, an ulterior motive though, because I think he just wanted to stick the boot into the Premier League because of the way they'd handled the takeover. That's that's my view on it. I don't I don't think it was because Mike Ashley was suddenly a great guy. <laughs> I just think he was uh, he was just wanted to stick it into the Premier League when they were already having bad PR. So um, he's not stupid. I'll give him that. Um, Matty, just as a QPR fan, obviously in the Championship, um, as far as I'm aware, all Championship clubs or Football League clubs are able to watch their matches via a streaming platform. Is that right? Yeah, that, yeah, that is right. But it does come at a cost. It's the I fo- the I follow um, sort of online channel. In the each club has it, but you have to you do have to pay your ten pounds to watch it. So actually, it's pretty similar to what the I suppose the guys yeah. the Premier League would do for these pay per views. Well, that's what that's um, what I was gonna say. Like, do you do you do you think that the Premier League fans have kind of spat their dummy out in a way, or do you think that because pre- presumably football league fans have got no other choice, so they've been paying it? Obviously, going down the leagues where the, where the money is a little bit tighter, um, I think the fans are, are probably more more. Um, willing to pay that 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 10 pounds if it's going to the club um i'm probably assuming not all of it's going to the club but i think the the clubs are benefiting from that 10 pounds um so actually in the current climate i think yeah i think fans are more willing to support the lower league clubs i think the fans of those family clubs those those clubs that that maybe haven't got that all that that money coming in from the premier league and the tv yeah. rights um, 
Whereas I think that for the Premier League, if it was if it was myself and I was a, pre- a fan of a Premier League club, and then you've got someone on the wages of say I don't know Mesut Ozil who's earning ridiculous amounts of money a week, yet I've still got to pay fifteen to, to watch him play. Um, or not? Yeah, it just doesn't sit there. Whereas I think for the lower league clubs, I think we're more willing to, to stick a hand in a pocket and to help our club out. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I've never thought of it like that, actually. But kind of when you put it like that, it makes sense. People a bit more willing, a bit more sympathy for the lower league teams in that respect, rather mm. than the, the, yeah. the not just the perceived greed of the Premier League, but the actual real greed that is the Premier League. It is just, it is just a money-making machine, and that's all that they're bothered about at the end of the day. So, uh, just just moving on. Matty, just behind you, I can see, uh, obviously, amongst your... Your QPR shirts, just before we, we started recording, you, we had a little bit of a conversation about international football. And obviously, I, I think it's really good news that Scotland qualified for the Euros last night. Um, and so that means England are going to get to play Scotland at Wembley for the first, well, in a major tournament for the first time since 1996. Mm. So that's pretty exciting. You've got your Gaza shirt behind you. So how long have you had that shirt for? Um, a few years, a few years, yeah, it's just been uh, collecting dust, so it's a perfect opportunity to get it out, give it a shake. You love it. Yeah, do, it's, do you... it's, 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 it's yeah, it brings back memories for every, I think for everyone, I think, I feel really, really privileged that actually I'm old enough to remember that, because it was, it was fantastic being on home soil, I think it's probably the first tournament that I actually remember England being in, because of, you're not qualified for the 94 World Cup. Yeah. Um, don't really remember the Euros in 92. Um, but yeah, the '96 was was the one that I would have been eleven. Um, yeah. One that I remember. Um, so yeah, actually drawing Scotland 18th of June Friday night, eight o'clock. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good one. Um, be good. What? Bring yeah. some memories. Uh, at Wembley yeah. again. So it's yeah, it, it's, it's something to look forward to. Definitely, I think it's be great. Back a little bit. Be great. Of, yeah. You're looking forward to it, Al. Six. The Euros. Oh yeah, can't wait. Just. Looking forward to it this year, actually, until it got obviously wiped out. Um, yeah. But yeah, playing Scotland. I mean, Scotland won't be any mugs either in it because I think they've got much stronger squad than they've had in a long time. Really, you think about um, all the players they had. You know, in these in the years they've never got into one of the major tournaments. They've always yeah. been players who have probably played in the SPL and and maybe in the Championship. Now they've got like players who are playing in the Premier League. You know, regularly yeah. like um, like Robertson. Um, obviously, McGinn at Villa, um, Tierney, you know, they're all, they're all playing at a, a good level now and they're decent players. I mean, obviously, the feelings are going to be that they are world class throughout the squad, but they're certainly a lot stronger than they used to be. Yeah, and let's be honest, the way England sometimes play football matches, it's not a, it's not a guaranteed win, is it? No, definitely not. No. And, and and if we know one thing about the Scots is that they'll be will definitely be up for the match, <laughs> so um, so we better be we better be wary for that. So Al, do you think was Euro '96 your first tournament that you can remember? Um, if I'm being honest, I didn't know much about '96. Um, I think '98 was more my really my memory. You know, when we were watching it, well, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Euro '96 was brilliant. Obviously, being on Palm Soil and and the you know the great Gavrigal and the, yeah, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would definitely agree with Matty. Really, it was definitely my first tournament that I remember. I think my dad just sort of because it was on home soil was so keen for me and my brother to kind of get wrapped up in it all that we just watched. I remember watching every match with with my dad um, and that Scotland game, including the Holland game as well. Where we absolutely battered Holland, uh, it was just brilliant. And then the semi-final, of course, when you know we were literally like a Gaza's toe <laughs> away from actually yeah. making the final. It's just heartbreaking, really. But it's good, good memories. I do vaguely remember uh, Italia '90 as well because uh, I remember watching. We were on holiday in Scotland for Italia '90, and uh, I remember watching uh, the Cameroon Cameroon game. And I also remember I used to, I was collecting the Panini stickers for the first time as a six, seven year old and uh, taking my big pile of stickers that I just unwrapped to the toilet uh, and and being six, dropping half of them down the toilet, including the uh, the Republic of Ireland shiny. It's heartbreaking. It's just no, it's bad. Shiny. 
<laughs> lost the <laughs> Republic of Ireland shiny. It's, it's devastated. I've not recovered from that. I really haven't. I really haven't. Um, just talking about international football more generally. I mean, obviously the tournaments. I, I love the tournaments and I love watching England in the tournaments and I can get right behind it. And But I am a bit of a... I must admit, I'm a bit of a fair weather England fan in a sense. Like, I like the big occasions. I, pers- I personally don't get into all the friendly matches and all that sort of stuff. I don't know what... Do you, Matty? Do you, do you, do you follow England passionately or, or do you, can you take it and take it or leave it? I think it's gone through waves, I think. I think being younger, I definitely did. I, I, like going back to Euro 96 and all the way through probably till 2004, Obviously, Rooney in Portugal and and the emergence of Rooney was, was brilliant. Enjoying to watch, enjoying to watch there. Two thousand and two was good. With, with obviously the likes of Beckham and Owen, and Beckham scoring that goal at Old Trafford to get us against Greece to get us through to the World Cup, and then it sort of tailed off a little bit during sort of your know, McLaren era and you can compel it. it just it just became boring. Honestly, when you had the the Euro qualifiers on a Friday night, it was probably easier to watch a couple of episodes of the Corrie than it was to watch <laughs> us trying to break the dead stone. Yeah. You know I mean, it was, it was just it went a little bit. Whereas yeah. actually as we come back on from, from the, the 2018 World Cup and the, the, the sort of hysteria and that was brilliant. It was a great tournament. We played with, I thought, um, I think it helps. Really good team now. So, yeah. I was I was just going to say I think quite it helped it, it, young lads. Yeah. We we do have some good players. I think the actual the 2018 tournament as well as England doing quite well. Okay, maybe a fortuitous draw. You know, we we kind of got lucky with the half of the draw we ended up on, but <laughs> it was still fun. But I just think the actual to- the whole tournament in Russia was was great and I think that just helps anyway uh, and the fact that England sort of did well as well is pretty good what about you Al How, how's your England kind of journey been over the years are you bothered are you not too bothered unless it's a tournament same yeah not too bothered it's, unless it's you know one of the major tournaments I'll watch maybe the qualifiers um, yeah but like last night's uh, the, the friendly against Ireland I didn't really watch any of it so obviously England anyway back in action this week for two two more matches obviously like Alan said a minute ago uh, played Ireland the other night but now we've got two Nations Cup matches so we've got Belgium on Sunday and then uh, the Iceland game at Wembley on Wednesday next week so what do you think the scores are going to be in those games I think it's going to be very tough they've got a really really good side um, we, I think we were quite lucky to, to get a result against them in the last in the, uh, in the last game that we played against them at Wembley. Yeah, I think we'll be, I think we'll do well to get away with a draw there. I think I think a lot of the, the, the regular players will come back in from, from those that missed out Friday night. No, not Friday night, Thursday night last night. Um, yeah, lucky to get away with a draw there. I think uh, at home to Iceland. I think they just had a good result away at France, didn't they? Iceland in the big in the big France. I think I think they beat France uh, in France two 0 um, wow. earlier in the week. So that that's not going to be a given, but I do think we'll get a result there. Um, yeah. So I'll give us I'll give us a one all draw away at Belgium, and I think we'll beat Iceland three nil. Uh, yeah, I think we'll be lucky to get a draw against the Belgians. Maybe I don't know. I think we got very lucky last time we played them with that win. Um, I mean, we could do it again, but I'd go for a draw in that one. Probably wild. And then Iceland, I don't think that'll be too comfortable either. They, they seem to they seem to pluck out really good results against the uh, you know the better international teams. I think uh, England will scrape a two-one win against them. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a little bit more pessimistic about the Belgium game. I I, I just don't see. I've I've not been impressed with recent England performances, uh, just generally. So I, I'm a bit worried about the Belgium game because I think. I think they're a tough team anyway uh, at the best of time. So I can see England losing that one narrowly, maybe 2-1, something like that. I do think we'll beat Iceland at Wembley though. But again, a, a bit like you two really, I'm, I don't really think, I don't think it's going to be like a runaway easy win or anything like that. I think it'll be really tough and maybe a 2-1 win to England uh, in that match. So that's, that was what I'd put it down to. But we'll see. And then 
then what we can all start doing is trying to work out what the Na what the Nations League actually does and what it means, and we'll because I still don't understand yeah. it. <laughs> but is it a, but, is it a friendly competition? Is it a proper competition? Who knows? Do we celebrate if we win it? I don't even know. I don't know. I mean, do England even do we get through if we beat Belgium and Iceland and finish top? Do we do we go and play the mini tournament again? Is that is that what happens? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. No one knows though, do they? <laughs> Apart from a few FIFA, a few UEFA officials or whatever FIFA officials. I don't even know who organises it. Anyway, UEFA, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, right. Thank you very much, uh, Alan and Matty. Really glad that you could join me tonight, and hopefully we can do this again another time and um, maybe chat a bit more about the league football uh, when it's not an international break. But uh, thanks very much for coming on. No, thanks very much. Cheers, Ian.